Hello, my name is Carmelo Lagaza. I'm here presenting with uh, Victor Navarro, Kevin Bill, and Hassan Zagabrian. And like Dr. Mamu said, we're here to present about their work with appreciation. Our motivation for this project was uh, current th uh, refrigeration methods are use Freon, which is released into the environment and that can be harmful to the environment. So we're trying to come up with a, with a different alternative. Um, so we uh, investigated different alternatives and we came up with uh, thermoplastic refrigeration as a, as a val 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 valid option. Uh, thermoplastic refrigeration methods do not use Freon, they, they use uh, regular air or pressurized helium. Uh, so, and, they're, and, the, and the gases are completely enclosed within the device, so they're not released into the environment. And they use less moving parts, making it more reliable in general. Our basic historic background, uh, the relationship between heat and sound was first observed in the 1800s by glassblowers who would hear sound emitted from their heater containers. Uh, in 1896, this was made useful in the thermoacoustic engines, which is generating heat through sound. But in the 1980s, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratories started investigating the possibility of uh, cooling with, with sound. Uh, the applications that they used them for was very high-end, high-tech applications such as, uh, such as space uh, exploration, they used it in the shuttle, and high, uh, big industrial applications. What we're trying to do in this project is to bring it down a scale and have it available to everybody uh, and have it more widely available. Uh, so one of the standards that we had to look at was uh, standards for measuring uh, change in temperature and power in standard refrigeration so we can compare our device fairly with, with conventional methods. Uh, and also we use fitting the gaskets so we have to make sure that the device was pressurized and that it was pressurized using the right uh, fittings. Our project objectives, like I was mentioning earlier, is to create a low cost to prove that thermocoustic refrigeration can be made uh, in a low cost scenario for uh, the everyday consumer. Um, addressing um, the science specifications, like I said, it was no emissions, uh, so it's environmentally friendly. Uh, and also, since it uses a speaker, it needs to be soundproof. Uh, it uses very low frequencies, which can be harmful, so insulation was something else that had to be uh, made uh, properly. Uh, so it had to be uh, energy efficient, easy to manufacture worldwide, and available worldwide and uh, portable and lightweight because we're making a uh, portable device. Thank you, Carmelo. So now, the main question most of you might have, what is thermoacoustics? Well, in layman's terms, as Carmelo mentioned, it's using sound waves to produce a temperature gradient. And a typical thermoacoustic device has several components. On the far left, we have the speaker housing. The speaker housing does uh, a lot of soundproofing as well as mainly contain the speaker. The speaker is the mechanical driver which produces acoustical waves. The hot and cold heat exchangers are located uh, on either side of the stack which is sandwiched in between and we have a resonator tube that contains the working fluid. Now a bit more about the stack. The stack is very important because it's the heart of our device. Uh, in comparison to the working fluid, there are certain properties that the stack must have, such as high heat capacity and low thermal conductance. To my left, you'll see uh, what would happen as the gas travels along the stack. As it moves along the stack, the sound wave compresses, and as it reaches its highest pressure point, it rejects heat back inside the stack. And then the next point, as it uh, travels towards the exit of the stack, uh, the sound wave expands yet again, and uh, the heat is expelled inside the stack. We have a cold heat exchanger and a hot heat exchanger to aid in the heat transfer. Um, and the resonator tube also contains the working fluids, and it should also be thermally insulated. Last semester, we had three ideas for design that we lovingly named Nancy, Richard, and Sebastian. Nancy, on the far left, has the most complex resonator tube design with a fairly simplistic stack uh, on the inside. 
Richard and Sebastian, however, have very simple resonator tube designs with more complex stack designs on the inner components. Now our final design, Oreo. Oreo uses a two diameter system because from the literature we found that the reduction of the surface area will reduce the thermal losses along the resonator tube. And um, now I will hand it off to Hassan. Hello. So a really big thing to us is we wanted to make this accessible to anybody in the world. And one thing that we need to figure out is how can we manufacture it cheaply and make it so that other people can actually get their hands on it as well. So what we did is we relied on two machines. We relied on 3D printing and CNCing. Uh, the printer that we use is the x -Car, the 400 by RepRap. And the CNC we use is, um, like, I'm sorry, the CNC we use is the x -Car, and the 3D printer is the X400 RepRap. Um, what we did is first we tried to figure out how to manufacture the stack. And one of the issues we were having is we needed a thinness of about 0 0.04 millimeters. But we were only able to get it within 0 0.08 millimeters. So something that we went about doing, we actually made notches within the stack at 22.5 degrees, which allowed us to place the stack at 45, in, 45 degrees to one another, creating that thinness that we wanted initially, which is the 0 0.04 millimeters, creating the stack for the thermocrystic refrigeration. Another thing we needed to take in consideration is keeping the distance constant between the speaker and the stack. So we actually made a spacer that would allow us to put the stack within the tubing and then have the spacer follow it in and place it within the unit. Um, something else that we really wanted to take into consideration was protecting it so that depending on the different situations that it may be placed within, you would actually have it working constantly without too many issues occurring. So we wanted to create a speaker mount. Um, within the speaker mount, if you can actually see here from the poster, there's a lock that holds the speaker within it. And we need to figure out a situation where to house it on the inside and still be able to access the wiring. So what we did is we cut out with acrylic two sheets. We made a bevel on the interior one and glued them together to get a friction fit. So basically what we did, we kept sanding around until we finally got it to fit without too many you know, issues to get it out. Um, that's the way that we went about actually constructing the design. The, the next thing what we wanted to do is because we wanted to also make sure that people around the world could use it, and, you know, generally you can be able to generate about five volts. We've got a low cost frequency generator that can generate between 100 to 1000 hertz, um, as you can see right here. And we kind of wanted to experiment with different values. We kept the voltage constant throughout. However, we changed between the hertz. Um, what we did is we allowed to basically have it that once you pass zero, we made it low. When we had it at the center, we had it at medium. When we put it all the way, we considered that high, just to get three different values to see how it would react differently to the working fluid within. So on our first trial, we actually didn't get any change. We were trying to figure out what the reason may be. And one way we went about it was that we figured, OK, maybe there's some loss in pressure going on. Um, a way that we were able to fix that situation is we were able to add some valves, one being for the balloon, which also allows you to put a pressure gauge onto it. And what we did is when we pumped in the pressure, or uh, the air, what it would, it would create pressure. And as long as the balloon would stay constant, we would know that there weren't any leaks. A uh, way that we had to go about making sure that the leaks weren't there was we used a, um, a shower liner that we would cut to the diameter of the outside ring, actually just slightly smaller into the diameter of the ring following it, and sealed them together so that no pressure would escape, and then a whole lot of masking tape and duct tape. Um, so after we did that, we actually observed some change in temperature. Now our first trial, we had about four degrees change and it was magical and we all sang and danced and it was a really great day for all of us. Um, but after that, we weren't actually able to do it again. We were only able to keep it between half a degree to a degree and constantly get that throughout our experimenting. So uh, our device, what we want to apply is different to different parts. One starting from, uh, we can maybe apply it for computers. Maybe to cool down the CPU when gaming, when uh, doing projects or anything big enough that will heat up the CPU. The next one will be uh, maybe use as an AC unit for a car. It will keep the, the passengers cold and it will be an easier way to replace it and less expensive. Now, uh, and then the last one is a portable cooler where maybe you, can, you want to take it to the beach, maybe you want to take it for different things, but what we pr prioritize is mainly to maybe use it in a third world country where uh, 
human beings who travel miles and miles of miles uh, to get maybe uh, food or or different needs or any type of uh, things that shouldn't get uh, shouldn't have a ch change in temperature that doesn't uh, explode. Now, uh, following that, uh, we did a cost analysis. One where is our main part is the left side. The left side of the table is all the, the device materials that went to 159. The reason why we decided uh, everything came out to that for our specific is because we already have all the devices, the CNC, we had a 3D printer that was provided to us by the Honors College uh, because the sign works in. And uh, so we have two different prices, one being on the left side, which only the, the materials. And then we did a calculation of uh, different hours of how long it took and uh, rate per hour and roughly if we calculate only the testing and building it came out to 267 dollars but if you combine it to do the whole prototype it will, it will come out to 426. now following this uh like we have been saying all along this device is very environmental friendly uh from uh, zero emissions we're using helium even if it escapes it's not gonna hurt anybody uh unless you're gonna be so uh you want to sound like a chipmunk <laughs> you want to do that all right uh following that uh it's mainly to try to make it soundproof uh to help out any animals to make sure they don't get hurt because they can uh, hear different frequencies than us and then last is to just keep the uh, the pressure uh less than five atmosphere which shouldn't do much to anybody on that sense it won't explode or anything like that following that uh, this is what uh, we did throughout the two semesters, starting from the problem definition, the literature survey, which was very interesting, learning from uh, different stuff from um, Ben and Jerry's uh, coolers that they do almost the same thing, uh, from prototyping and then testing on the last final months, and as we can see, our final design. Now, for future works, what uh, we would really like to finish it off later on, will be uh, to maybe change the acoustic driver. Uh, make the speaker a little bit smaller or it all depends on how big we want to make it. Following that will be the buffer volume. Uh, so the buffer volume, uh, based on similar projects to ours, is an expansion at the, at the top of the tube uh, that creates uh, like, uh, like um, the expansion is like open to atmosphere. Uh, effect on it so that the waves coming inside the tube don't bounce back and so it doesn't have that echo effect that can negate some of the effects of the thermocrystal in, in the refrigerator. Um, some other things we can do, uh, our device wasn't, didn't uh, perform as well as we thought, uh, as we thought it was going to perform through modeling and that's ma mainly because of the stack manufacturing. Uh, the, the separation wasn't optimal for the frequencies that we're going. So another thing to do in the future would be to explore different manufacturing of the stats and different and try to set the stats. We try to keep the the prototype fairly modular so that you can easily take out the stack and replace it with a with a different, with a different model. Uh, also insulation methods like uh, as I was saying earlier. Uh, right now we have insulation from uh, Home Depot. Uh, home insulation, uh, but that's not the best way to insulate this. The best way to insulate it would be to create actually like a second sleeve and pull, try to pull a vacuum in there. Uh, we need a better pressure seal on the actual device and we need to do a lot of manufacturing done with that so that would have offset a, a cost a lot. So that's why we didn't do it for this prototype, but that's something worth exploring for future works to make the device uh, more efficient. Um, for the heat exchangers, we were currently using thin copper rings we were experimenting with them, but we found that they were too thick. Uh, the ones that we were using were, I believe, 0 0.003 inches thick, and we needed it to be around 0 0.001. So in future works, we believe that if we have a thinner heat exchanger, we can uh, increase thermal or the heat transfer efficiencies. And of course, we want to talk about the battery and power integration. This one actually is, is personal to me because an interest that I have for this project is actually coral conservation in the oceans. Um, so because of global warming and the way that the oceans are heating up, coral is actually dying. So what I'm thinking is that if we can make the bottom buoyant 
flip it upside down, put it in the water, you start to suck heat out of the water, and in turn, cooling the oceans again. Um, but that would require figuring out a way to power it when it's in the water, floating around, being like a buoy. So, so well, we want to really appreciate you guys coming here to listen to our presentation, and we would like to open the floor for any questions or suggestions. So your actual uh, temperature delta was only a half a degree to a degree? Uh, so we were able to consistently get half a degree to a degree. And the first time you ran it, you saw? One. Four degrees. Why is it different? We think that the, pre the pressure was, uh, the pressure seal was damaged after the first. Yeah, because initially we didn't have the, uh, well, first we didn't have the housing on the speaker the same way. We had it open from the bottom. So we believe maybe something, because we actually were testing it next to a computer, maybe because we had two thermocouples from different places checking the change in temperature. One was maybe heated up by the computer, by the ambient temperature, and the other one was cooling down. Oh, we so you, you, air. you think the four degree wasn't a real measurement? Yeah, we don't, we don't trust that one so much. The one we trust is the one we were able to consistently get after we sealed everything up and we checked it from there. Okay, and, and just again, I think you said it, but say it again, please. What would you do differently in order to get like a 15 degree Fahrenheit delta, which is what typically you would need for Which is uh, what we have in the model that we did with the uh, software called LJC, which is spe uh, it's, uh, specialized for uh, uh, acoustic devices. Uh, one of the reasons of why we didn't get that in practice was because of the differences with the, the stack, I think. It's, I would think it's uh, primarily probably in the stack because of the pressure change. So basically what heat does is it goes from a place of lower pressure to higher pressure. So when you get the, the sound waves hitting it, you create pressure on one side of the stack that's created through you know, the force. So you get higher pressure on the bottom, so it sucks heat from the tube into there. So even though we do actually have a pretty thin stack, if you hold it up to the light here, you guys can actually see it. Um, we don't think it's efficient enough to actually get the pressure change we need to actually do that kind of change in temperature. So there's different methods that we can go about that, such as like laser cutting into plastic. We chose ABS because it can handle temperature change pretty well to about 240 degrees Celsius. Um, but of course, we could have done something like aluminum, done something you know like that, and just got a really, really thin little slit, and then put that together and proceeded. So and of course, if there's any spacing within there, there might be pressure losses in between. You might lose temperature along the way, and you get what we got. And another primary reason for that is that we never ran the speaker at its what it's yeah. rated for, which is 200 watts. We, we were try to, it. yeah, we don't want to break it because we wanted to have it for the presentation. But uh, <laughs> so since we don't want to break it, we break this every minute, so we're not giving it full power. So that might be another reason why the performance was less effective. So like now we'll go play some Metallica on it, but before we don't want to do that. Um, but our, our main thing was we wanted to show that you can do this cheaply. That it's an alternative to what is already out there. That there's a new solution to what we're doing currently. And we wanted to show that you know, if we leave this open source, let's say, and we put the CAD files online, and you can pull up Fusion as a student. Fusion 360, you can do the CAM software for it, and then you can go ahead and CNC it yourself. Or for example, the, the production is pretty cheap. Like each one of those products probably costs under 10 cents. Then if we were to produce them, mass produce them, and sell them each for a dollar, we'd make profit off of that as well, and then we can start a business with this. And then hopefully guide you know, what refrigeration is now to something new and you know, cultivate that kind of idea. And save the coral. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you think changing the design frequency could be, could maybe optimize? Yeah, we tested the, uh, different frequencies cycle? from 100 to 400 hertz, uh, and you saw a slight change in the difference. Uh, what we did is design for a specific frequency that we started off with, based on the literature and what other thermobus refrigerators uh, used. Uh, we started with the frequency, and then we got the geometry based on that. Correct. So it was optimized for 100 to 400 hertz, which is what we 